Hello everyone, greetings from Bangladesh. It's me, Dr. Reshma Sharmin from Bangladesh. I wish I would join with you physically. Unfortunately, I couldn't come. So I'm sharing my study here with all of you. Today, my talk will focus on about negligence and phobia about HRT among female doctors in Bangladesh, which is an urgent need to focus on. First, let me share with you what are the facts which led me to do this study. Recently, a review published in Climactric, the Journal of International Menopausal Society, stated that still a great divide exists between what is real and what is not in perception of risk and benefit of HRT. The threat that women may develop breast cancer and cardiovascular disease is the major reason why the physician are afraid of using HRT for themselves as well as for their patients. Routine acceptance of use of HRT was shattered in 2002 when results of the large randomized control trial, the Women Health Initiative and HERS in 1998 stated that HRT associated with increased risk of breast and ovarian cancer, as well as increased risk of cardiovascular disease. However, later it has proved that those large studies were failed to address the effect of HRT in symptomatic younger women as those studies included only postmenopausal women with mean age more than 60 years. Now it is established from different RCT that breast cancer related to combined HRT use is rare because the risk is very low. Modifiable lifestyle factors not combined HRT are the real risk of breast cancer. However, still there is no such study among female doctors in Bangladesh to address the attitude and knowledge about HRT prescription. So it is indeed an urgent issue to do the study to assess the negligence and phobia about HRT among female doctors in Bangladesh. My study objectives were, were to assess the prevalence of HRT use in symptomatic perimenopausal and postmenopausal female doctors, to assess the knowledge of HRT, including both risk and benefit, also to find out the reasons behind the fear of HRT prescription. We have formulated a menopausal questionnaire, including 25 questions for this study, and we have collected data from 100 female doctors where we have included the lady doctor whose age is in between 45 to 60 years, and we have excluded the doctors who have relative contraindications of HRT, like as existing cardiac disease, active liver and disease, and having systemic lupus erythematosus, previous breast, ovarian, or endometrial cancer, undiagnosed vaginal bleeding, previous personal or family history of clot. In our study, 100 doctors participated, among them, 50 are OB-GYN specialists, 25 non-OB-GYN specialists, and 25 are GP. If we consider their age, from this pie chart, we can see more than half of them fall in between the age range of 45 to 50 years. And if we consider their BMI, half of them are obese, and just under a third of them are overweight. When we consider their physical activity, it is really important to notice from this pie chart that more than half of them are not doing walking or exercise at all, and only 5% of them are doing walking or exercise regularly, and less than a fifth of them are doing walking and exercise occasionally. And regarding their current menopausal status, Two-fifths of them are going through menopause, just under a third of them are already menopause, and just under a third of them are post-menopause. When we consider the reasons of their menopause, a major proportion of them, 70%, got their menopause due to age-related phenomena, and the rest of them had their menopause due to either surgery, disease, or chemotherapy and radiotherapy. When I look at this chart regarding short-term menopausal symptom experienced, we can see that majority of them have suffered from different short-term menopausal symptoms like as vasomotor, musculoskeletal, mood disorder, urogenital, and sexual difficulties up to that level which has affected their quality of life. Please note at this pie chart where the figure illustrating that 
a major proportion of them, 70%, have never taken HRT for themselves in spite of having perimenopausal or menopausal symptom, which is really frustrating. And only one in 10 of them have been using HRT from the time when the symptom has started. On the other side, when we consider the frequency of HRT prescription for their symptomatic patient, we can see from this chart that still two-fifth of the OB-GYN specialist doctor are not prescribing HRT for their symptomatic patient. On the other side, among the non-OB-GYN doctors, half of them don't have any idea about such symptom and such treatment. A quarter of them neither prescribe nor refer only one in 10 of them prescribe HRT for their symptomatic patient. When we tried to assess the level of updated knowledge of menopause, we found that still a, a fifth of the OB-GYN specialist and a significant portion of the non-OB-GYN doctors are not aware of the correct diagnostic criteria of menopause. Though both OB-GYN and non-OB-GYN doctors have sound knowledge about short-term menopausal symptom, still majority of them are in lack of knowledge about the long-term menopausal consequences. When we try to assess the level of knowledge regarding HRT safety profile in OB-GYN consultant doctor, we found that regarding these three facts, they have good amount of knowledge that is the relation of HRT with reduced fragility fracture, relation of HRT with increased risk of breast cancer, and relationship of HRT of causing type 2 diabetes mellitus. In these three areas, OB-GYN doctors have fair knowledge. However, still, even if the OB-GYN consultants are in lack of knowledge about the fact that weight gain is not an adverse effect of HRT. HRT with only estrogen is associated with little or no risk of breast cancer, and HRT does not increase cardiovascular disease risk when started in women age under 60 years. So these are the three areas where we can work on. And when we consider the same fact in non ob consultant, we can see that majority of them are not aware of the HRT safety profile. And from our study, we found four reasons which are responsible for not prescribing HRT. Lack of knowledge of menopausal symptoms and its consequences. Lack of knowledge about the safety profile of HRT. Bearing false belief of HRT causing significantly increased risk of breast cancer, as well as increased risk of cardiovascular disease. When we asked them about the impact of perimenopausal and menopausal symptom at workplace capacity, more than half of them agreed that it impacted negatively due to having vasomotor symptom, mood disorder, as well as cognitive impairment. Significant proportion of them stated that there were no workplace adjustment to help them cope with symptom, as well as they are not aware of any menopause related policy. When we raised the voice about the fact that menopause at workplace should have the same status as pregnancy in workplace, majority of them agreed with this demand though they have not heard about it. So from my study, I got some key points, key messages where we can work on. That is, we can bridge the gap in risk perception by evidence-based knowledge we can circulate summary statement about HRT safety profile by different media, where we need to focus on the fact that breast cancer related to combined HRT use is rare because the risk is very low. It is the modifiable lifestyle factor, not combined HRT, are the real risk of breast cancer. We can plan regular edit to assess about the prevalence of HRT use as well as the status of working capacity of menopausal doctors.
Now, finally, I would like to conclude my session by stating preventing a woman from the sound benefits of a properly instituted hormonal medication just for the fear of rare side effect is frustrating. The most serious consequences of the negative attitude toward HRT is the neglect of menopause education and training among healthcare professionals. So this needs to be a real priority. Again, thank you everyone. Again, I would like to thank the whole organizing committee of International Menopausal Society to allow me to do this presentation, to have this prestigious opportunity. Thank you everyone.